the log cabin is a very traditional old block. And I am going to do something a little scrappy with it. On the same hand, I'm going to continue to follow uh, the basic concept of light on one half of the log cabin <clears throat> and dark on the other. Traditionally, the center square is either red or yellow, meaning the heart or the light of the home. Well, I'm going to use a jelly roll to make this uh, log cabin block, and it doesn't have red or yellow, so we're going to go with a dark center. This is an easy way, much easier way to do a log cabin than it was when I did one, my first quilt, well, a long time ago. <laughs> there, we had yardages of fabric. We picked out three or four lights, three or four darks. We picked out our center. We cut all of them. Jelly rolls make life so much easier. So I happened to go to my stash and find a jelly roll that has some lights and darks. It's not super, super obvious, so we're gonna have to do some separating. This is a Jelly Roll Bolly Pop um, by Hoffman. And as you can see, it has darks, it has some mediums, it has darks, some lights. So I'm going to pick out what I want. This contains 40 strips and I need 33 strips. I need six, 18 strips of dark, 12 strips of light, actually 14 strips of light, and one strip for the middle. All right, so let's get going. Get that, okay, so first of all, we're gonna open this puppy up. There we go, there we go. Okay, so a hump in the middle there. I decided, let's see, I want a dark for my, ooh, that'd be a pretty, I love that color. The teal, that's like my favorite color. But I think we're gonna go, oh man. Oh, decisions, decisions. This is what happens when I'm doing this on the fly. Traditionally, I was thinking I was gonna pick this one for my dark center. But, man, I'm really, I'm really hedging towards, towards this one. You know what? I think I'm gonna go with this one. The reason I wanna go with this one is it's got some lights, it got, has some darks, and it's kind of a brighter. So, there's my center. What the heck? Okay, so now we're gonna to wanna to separate our lights and our darks. And I'm gonna go through this. This uh, jelly roll is not super, super obvious of lights and darks. Um, I have this other Hoffman Bolly Pop, and as you can tell here, it's really obvious what our darks are and our lights are, and more lights down here. So this actually would have been a really good pick to do my log cabin with, but I have two of these, and I'm really kind of saving them for a bigger project. So this one is going to uh, be a size that will be a good size for a lap quilt. Okay, so there's my middle. So I need a bunch of darks. And so I am going to quit talking. And as I separate these out, I'm gonna have my husband speed up the video so you don't have to watch me hem and haw over this. If you've got a jelly roll that is um, easier to pick your lights and darks, then you're in a good spot. Stay tuned. Okay, I think I have them separated into enough piles. It actually is ending up being my browns are on the dark tones and then my lights are well, kind of on the teal. So we're gonna kind of see where it comes out in the end. So for the darks, I need eight strips that I'm gonna set in um, piles of three stacks of six fabrics each. Two, three, whoops, whoopsie, whoopsie, we're taking apart. Four, six. Hopefully I've separated these out enough that I have because I didn't exactly count the first time. One, two, three. Uh-oh. We're gonna need to, so what do I have? One, two, three, four, Four, five, six, one, two, three, four, one. 
we're going to need to put a teal into the mix. There's six. One, two, three. I need three more. So I need to grab three more. Oh, here we go. I pulled a few darks out. And we're going to do a switcheroo because I don't. I kind of want to keep some different ones in my pile. Okay. I have what I would consider dark fabrics on all of these. So like I said, this is going to be a little more scrappy. If you're more structured with things, that's okay. So we've got our three piles. Oops, I'm going to separate this out. That is my center. So we've got our three piles of six darker colors from my Bolly Pop. So what we're going to do is we need to cut them, and, and we're cutting them in such a fashion that um, we're kind of optimizing the strips. I'm gonna make this really easy here. So you've got your three, you've got your three piles of fabric, and the first pile you're gonna cut 14 and a half inch, and a four and a half inch strip. So that's about 19 inches. Well, it actually is 19 inches. <laughs> and then the next set of strips, 12 inches and six and a half inches. So basically we're cutting this in a fashion that optimizes the strips. And then 10 and a half inches by and an eight and a half inch strip. So from each set, those are what you're going to cut. Okay, so with that said, I'm going to set that aside. So I am not going to walk you through doing all of them. I'm going to set these back there. Uh-oh, I dropped one. Hmm. That looks like I'm a light tone. Okay, now you might want to go out and press each of these. Let's see, what's, what's the length of this without Yep, I've got like 22 inches. So I'm actually going to leave mine connected there. And I'm gonna just stack them on each other. So it's totally up to you. If you're someone that is like, uh, nope, nope, I need to cut one piece at a time, then that's what you're gonna do. So I'm actually stacking up three. And then right above it, I'm going to put another three. And as long as you know that you've got 19 inches in there to work with, you're going to be fine with this. Okay. So there we go. So you can choose to cut these out however you would like. And actually, I prefer to cut and kind of avoid that little elbow that sometimes happens on the folded edge. It just kind of, it does. It has a little elbow, so we're gonna try and avoid that. So we have plenty of room. So I know I need at least 19 inches. I've got plenty. I've got like 21 plus on each of these. So I'm gonna just kind of Whack off. Oh, I don't need to whack off that much. All right. So we're going to trim off the edges of that. And then, you know, we're going to straighten this out a little bit. So this is my first set. So I need 12 and a half inches. No, I need 14 and a half and four and a half. So. There is my fourteen and a half. Okay, and then from there, I need. I'm going to set those aside. 
And I'm going <laughs> to, because you can't see this. And now from here, I need a four and a half inch set. And you know what? Because I moved them, we're going to do one at a time. Usually, I'll admit, I don't, I don't cut my strips like this. I'm kind of a one at a time person, but this is very efficient. And if this works for you, go for it. If it doesn't, and you prefer to cut your strips in a different fashion, then please do so. Okay, there we go. So now we have our four and a half inch pile and our 14 and a half inch pile. And I'm one that I usually <laughs> grab a sticky here. 14 and a half. Four and a half. Okay. All right, so now we've got that pile. And we're gonna do the same thing with the other dark sets. So I've got my other dark set here, and in this way, I'm gonna just take two pieces here. You're gonna do the same thing. And in this fashion, You know what, since I'm only doing two of them, we're just gonna do it like this. We're gonna make this simple. And I actually like to use a little bit smaller ruler. So this set, we need a 12 and a half and a six and a half. So. Twelve and a half. And a six and a half. Okay. Once again, get my little stickies out here. I think it'll be pretty obvious when I get done, but this way there's no re-measuring later. I have them labeled. Okay, I'm gonna put those with that because I'm going to cut these later. And then my last pile, basically, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take, take a piece, you can stack them, cut them, however you want. And in this case, we need a 10 and a half. So now I have these cut and we're going to do my cute little labeling to make sure I know what they are. So this was my 10 and a half and eight and a half. So there's my eight and a half, eight and a half and my 10 and a half. Okay, I'm gonna set those aside and I'm gonna cut the rest of these out a little bit later because you really don't need to watch me cut them all out. Now we've got our center. And I'm pretty sure, I've been moving fabric around, but I'm pretty sure this is the one I decided for my center. It's kind of bright. You know what, I'm gonna double check my pile, but yeah, it's pretty bright. It's got a little bit of um, the brown and the light in it. So we're gonna, we're gonna, am I, am I? Yeah, 
Yeah, this is what I'm gonna go with my center. So this one, I am going to fold it over because we need 12 of these. So we're gonna just fold it over. Actually, I don't. I'm kind of, we're gonna do it this way. We're gonna just do a single strip. You could fold it over if you're fine cutting, you know, three and four layers at a time, go for it. It's just fine. So I'm gonna whack off the end here and I'm gonna cut my two and a half inch squares. And with all of these, you're actually cutting twice as much of everything. So we had one strip that we cut 14 and a half and four and a half. Well, that meant you got two four and a, 14 and a halves and two four and a halves. So like with this, I need 12 of the center squares. So two, four, six. That's good enough for now. I will cut the rest later. So you know you're gonna get your 12. And in, in essence, you're really optimizing them by cutting your strips in this fashion, you're really optimizing them by using about 38 inches of the 42. So basically you're gonna end up with, if I could get my fingers, that size strip left, that size piece left out of every strip, which you know what? This is nice fabric for the scrap bin. Basically about five inches. You know what? This could come in very handy for the mug rugs I'm making because I think, hopefully I need five and not five and a half. Anyway, nice size pieces for your scrap. So a lot of stuff, it's not gonna go to waste. Okay, now that I have my center square done, uh-oh, we have to remember to do the lights. We got the darks done. The lights are gonna be the same concept. Basically, you're gonna need 12 strips of your light fabric. And I went ahead because, as I said, my Olipop, my jelly roll, wasn't incredibly obvious of lights versus the darks. The darks were pretty obvious and they were mostly in the brown tones and the lights seemed to be more in the, um, kind of the bluish. So I actually went through and picked out what I wanted. I have 12 strips of lights that we're gonna cut very similar to the browns or the darks. And then I've got two other strips that where you just need to cut um, two and a half by four and a half. And so with that said, I'm gonna look at this and go, my two and a half by four and a half inch strips are going to go close in the middle. So I'm going to want a lighter fabric in there. So I think, I know I have a really light fabric in here. Oh, there we go. Let's we could choose that one or that one. That one's a little too close to the, well, let's do that one. Oh, we're gonna do this one. Okay, so my light one here is gonna be really close to the middle. So we're gonna just grab that one. Once again, I've got my one edge there that I can quickly square up. I'm going to only cut a few of these so I don't waste your time cutting more of them. So once again, we're gonna need 12 of these. So there's two, four, and we'll do the rest. Wow, what the heck? Six. There we've got six of that one because I need to do this of two strips. So what else do I want on my light? Oh, decisions, decisions. I get a little, I get a little particular um, on my things once in a while, even though this is gonna be scrappy. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go with this one. I think it kind of coordinates well. So we're gonna do this one as well. So we're gonna do whack off the end. And 
I got two, four, six out of the other one. And so I could have gotten eight out of here, but you know what? I got a particular, so I'm gonna do six out of each strip. So I'm gonna have a nice uh, scrappy piece of scrap left over for that one. So there I have it. I now have 12 pieces, one for each of the blocks, uh, two and a half by four and a half. Okay, so we're gonna, I can tell what size those are. We're gonna set those aside over there. Okay, and then with our other strips, we need to do the same thing that I did with the other ones. So we're gonna pick a few of them. Oh, that one's kind of funky on the end. And this time we're gonna trim our darks. For our dark, for our lights, I apologize, Jice. Where'd my pen go? I lost it. There it is. There it is right there. So these were our darks. Our light, we're gonna do, um, we need 12 strips and we're going to go 12 and a half, six and a half, and 10 and a half, eight and a half. Okay? So we're going to do that with our lights. And we're going to do, you know what? I'm going to just, we're going to take one of these strips. Long ruler. Usually I prefer to use the shortest ruler that that allows me to get what I want because it gives me more control. So we need a 12 and a half. And a six and a half. Whoopsie. Six and a half. And I'm gonna label those. I will label them in a bit because I know what they are because we're only doing a little bit at a time here. And then this one, we're gonna lop off the end. Basically, we're just lopping off the end to get of us a uh, nice, and that's, so I can use my short ruler now, which I much prefer. We need a 10 and a half. And of course, the phone buzzes in the middle of videos. Ha <laughs> ha, that always happens. There's my 10 and a half, and there's my eight and a half. Okay, so now we're going to label these each. Eight and a half, ten and a half, and my other one was six and a half and twelve and a half. So there's my twelve and a half, there's my twelve and a half. And there's my six and a half. So now I can go and grab the rest of my lights and get them all cut out. And then we'll see where we are. And now we can mo start moving forward with putting things together. Okay, I have all my cutting done. So what do we have? We have our two and a half inch centers. We have a two and a half inch light and a four and a half inch light. Okay, then from our darks, we have a four and a half inch, six and a half inch, eight and a half, 
Ten and a half. Oh, is it all gonna fit on the screen? I don't know. Hold on here. Need to wind that up. Twelve and a half. And fourteen and a half. <coughs> Excuse me. So there we have four and a half, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. So we those we have our darks all lined up. Well, guess what? We have six and a half inch light, eight and a half, whoops, straggler of our eight and a half, our ten and a half, and a twelve and a half. Okay, we have quite the pile going on. So now we'll show you what to do with them. Okay, we're gonna move those all over here, keep my lights and my darks separated. Sometimes when I'm not working on a project and planning on getting it done all at one time, I will also put little baggies. I have these wonderful baggies. I have these wonderful baggies that are about this size and it's really cool. I just get my Sharpie out and I go dark four and a half. And then I put in light you know, so I create a bag for each one. Or in this case, if your lights and darks are very obvious, you could put your lights and darks of the same size in one baggie. That way, you're set when you want to take this project on the road or <laughs> when it gets set aside for, I don't know, weeks, months, whatever, and you come back and go, hmm, what is all of this piles of stuff I have? Okay, so there's my 14. So what you're going to do is you're going to start with your center, well, fiddlesticks, your center, and then you're gonna add a light, one of your two and a halves, and then we're gonna add, well, fiddlesticks, a four and a half. And now these aren't gonna all look completely cool because, well, we don't have any seam allowances in here, so, just kind of keep that in mind. Darks, lights, darks. So essentially, we're gonna just kind of go round and round. Um, let's grab an eight and a half. There eight and a half. Grab a different 10 and a half. Now, if you leave your piles piled up the way you cut them, you can just kind of pull them off and you're going to have similar blocks of the same combinations. Or you can mix and match and do whatever you want. So there's that. So then we're going to grab a 12 and a half and a 14 and a half of our dark. Oh, let's see. I want this one in the middle. Of course I do. Okay, so there we've got that. And then we go with our lights. So there we've got our six and a half, an eight and a half, our eight and a half, Whoops, ha, <laughs> that one matched too closely to the other one. And our 12 and a half. See, because I've got so many of them with the same pile and our 12 and a half. So essentially, it's kind of weird. <laughs> kind of a little hard to envision it a little bit, but in essence, as you can see, you've got your darks on this end, your lights on this one. Because I chose a jelly roll that wasn't very distinctive, I'm gonna have quite a variety. A lot of times with the traditional log cabin, you will have your center, and then these two fabrics will match, these two fabrics and these two magics, and you go from light to darker. So it's all light on this side, but it gets a little bit toned darker. And then in here, these two match, these two match, and these two match, and you go from um, dark to darker as you go out. Ours is gonna be a little more scrappy. So if you're gonna work with a jelly roll, 
You're just going to have to take a look at it and judge, hmm, is this going to work for the structure I want? Otherwise, you can always go by fabric, yardage, and then cut your two and a half strips in strips to your heart's content. It will be a little bit different than this. On the other hand, all you have to do is you can use the same concept. You're going to just cut um, two and a half inch strips and work with them in that fashion and think about the um, your fabrics that you're working with. But let's not confuse things with that. We're going to work with this jelly roll. So now I'm going to pick up a few things and then we're going to go to the sewing machine and I can show you how one, we're going to create one block. We're going to get one block done and make sure you understand the concept of how it's going to be put together. And then from there, if you pick up your fabric and layer them by size, you can go and just um, piece them one right after the other at the sewing machine without a lot of back and forth other than pressing them, which having a pressing um, mat next to your sewing machine will make this quilt go a lot faster as well. So I'll be back momentarily. Everything is cut out and now we're ready to piece. The best thing to do is piece one block to start with to make sure you understand how the pieces all go together and you're comfortable with it. Then the speedy way to do it after that is pick up the pieces in the right order and do chain piecing and then you are good to go and this will go together very, very quickly. So here's the thing. I put together this little diagram to help you out. I'm going to see if we can get this to focus properly. There we go. So here we go. The key thing is we're starting with our two and a half inch blocks in the center and then we've got a four and a half inch light. And the key thing to note is that these are your lights on this side and here are your darks. And the, the number in front of the picture, the image there, is the order that you're putting them together. So one and two, your two two and a half inch blocks. And then you're going to do the third one is a four and a half inch light and then a four and a half inch dark, a six and a half inch dark, a six and a half inch light, eight and a half light and dark. So basically you're going to go around the circle and do a light and a dark of the same size strip, just going around. So let's, what I've done is I've laid out my fabrics in such a way that I have my piles all laid out. I've also, yes, as you haven't noticed by now, I'm a little particular. So I've also kind of ordered my fabrics such that as I'm picking them up, I know I'm not getting the same exact dark for both say the six and a half and the eight and a half. I want both of those strips to be different and hopefully they will coordinate together nicely when it all comes said and done. So here we go. We're going to start with our middle one. We've got our center square and now Here's the thing to note is that what did I do with my block? Well, here it is. <laughs> I keep losing things. Here is my original block. And as you notice in the middle, we've got our middle one and then our two and a half inch and our four and a half for lights. Those last two cuts we did with two pieces of fabric. So I have a preference that I'm going to make sure this fabric is different from that fabric. So I just make sure in my pile that my pile of two and a half is opposite of my four and a half inch strips to make sure that I don't get the same fabric on both of them. Now, if you would prefer they are the same, go for it. No problem whatsoever. Okay, so we've got that and we've got that and my four and a half inch and then get my little get my little instruction here make sure I'm doing it right and then I'm going to grab a four and a half inch dark and then a six and a half inch dark and a six and a half inch light and an eight and a half inch light and an eight and a half inch dark and a ten and a whoops and, and then a ten and a half inch dark 
and a 10 and a half inch light. And now I'm too far over to one side and you can't see the entire block. So we'll put that out a little. 10 and a half, and now we're doing a 12 and a half inch light. A 12 and a half inch dark. And finally, our 14 and a half inch at the top. So there we go. That is the block that we're going to do. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to stitch this in a way that if we pick up one piece at a time and I just stack them, this will all come out and it'll make it really easy to sew. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, five. As you can see, I'm just picking them up and going around the circle. And that way, they're going to be exactly in the order that I need to sew them when I go to the sewing machine. Key thing to note is when you're going to sew these first two together. And then for me, I twist it so the center is at the bottom. The center is at the bottom. So then when I grab the next piece, I set it here and I sew it, and it's perfect. We're going to twist it to the left. We're going to fold that up, and I'm going to, I'm going to finger press my seam. And personally, I would also like to iron it uh, with, with my iron, but for now, through the process of this, we're going to finger press it. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to finger press it, and then we're going to twist it to the left, and then we can grab the next one and sew it on and so on and so forth. So I'm going to show you that with the sewing machine to make sure it is completely clear. So now you've created one block and you know it looks fabulous. You also have your little cheat sheet here that lays out exactly the order you need to put things. So now what you're going to do is before you saw me have all of my strips laid out in piles based on their sizes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to not just go grab one of each of them to do one block. I'm going to go grab the whole pile of each. So hold on here and let me do that. So now I have my whole pile of fabric and I can set it right next to my sewing machine and then we can just do them one set at a time. So in this case, I'm going to grab my middle one. And I bet you can guess what we're going to do. We're, instead of doing one of these at a time, we're going to chain piece them all. So we've already got one block done, so that means you should have 11 more of these. So we're going to just do a whole bunch of these at a time. And then what you can do is we're going to just do a few of these because I think you're going to get the point. So basically, you would do that with all 11 blocks left. You've got your chain piecing then here. I would then unclip each of these. I would take them to the ironing board and I would press them all at once. Pressing them once again, we're going to press them away from the center. Each one of them. Get them all set. Okay, so now I have three of those. Now I can grab my four and a half inch pile. And bingo, I'm going to put those on. 
with my center towards the bottom. And you're going to do the same thing. And you're going to just chain piece them. So basically, I think you get it. The key thing is you're going to take each set at a time, do all 11 of them, clip them into separate pieces, make sure they're positioned right with the, um, the green on the bottom, and then remember to twist them correctly. What I would recommend you do as you press them, twist them, get them right, and then bring them back to the sewing machine, lay them in a pile so they're the correct way that you can pick them up, and then immediately grab that next piece of fabric and put it on, um, put it in line, and you're ready to go and zip them up. And then by the time you get done, you will have all 12 of your blocks done in no time. And it's really that simple. Now, the fun begins also when you get to put them together. Because we've gone with a block structure that is half light and half dark, there's a couple different ways that you can lay them out. What fun with that. So I'm going to finish up some more blocks and then I'll show you what you can do with your blocks and a variety of ways to put them together. I have now gotten a whole slew of blocks together. Yep, and I have a few more tips that I would like to give you. What I did as I got to each stage of my blocks, so this is the kind of the, the first stage, a actually it's the second stage, it's a six and a half inch block, but actually as soon as I got the two middle pieces on and the first four and a half inch, I squared up my block. Basically, I decided, you know, some people say don't square up until the very end, but in this regards, you have so many pieces in here and it really is so easy to get a little off. And then by the time you get to the end, you're going, oh, it's a little off kilter. So just take the time as you get each section done to square it up. Now, here's the thing. It isn't just about squaring up around the outside edges. You need to pay attention to your seams. So right now, this is a six and a half inch block. It needs a little tweaking. In fact, it's going to get ripped out. But I want to use it as an example. So I could put my ruler on here and go, oh yeah, there we go. If I trim this and this, I've got my six and a half inch. But here's the thing. You want to pay attention to your seams and where they fall. So really, that line there should be there, and that should be there. So I have a nice square in my middle, which eh, actually I'm not too far off. Actually, yeah, this one's not bad. I can definitely correct this without taking it apart. So in this regards, I make sure that seam so my, let's see, what would it be? My four and a quarter is here. So basically you've got a four and a quarter inch block and then your six and a half inch. So just pay attention and you'll be able to see it. The creative grid rulers are amazing for this because you've got so many lines and as long as you set it on there and start paying attention to your seams and how they line up, you'll realize how you need to trim up your block and get it to be six and a half, four and a half, whatever, and at the same time have some straight seams. And seriously, if it's totally a little wonky and, and you're going, ah, it's just not trimming up, don't trim it. Rip it out. We've all been there and sometimes the seam ripper is the best thing you can do. So take it out, adjust your seams, figure out what needs to be adjusted, and you'll be fine. And sometimes for me, it's just the fact that I got to the end of a block and I wasn't kind of holding on to it and it, it shifted as I got to the end of the seam. Well, then when I add another block on it, it, it adjusts it again. So that's what I would recommend. So that way, when you get done, you're going to end up with a lot of 14 and a half inch squares. Then, so these, 
that I'm using two and a half inch strips for, they will, they will be completed once all sewn together, a 14 inch block, which makes a pretty decent sized um, lap quilt that you can get with a uh, one jelly roll. And then you can add a few borders and you have a very nice size. I'm still not quite sure how I'm going to lay mine out. As you can see here, there's mine. And unlike some layouts, because of the tones of my fabric, I don't have an incredibly distinctive dark and light. It's more of a dark and medium, depending on what block I'm looking at. So my layout is going to kind of vary because I don't have that very distinctive light and dark. Go out to Google and Google for log cabin quilt block layouts and you're going to find a whole slew of different layouts that you can use your log cabin blocks in. Choose one that you like. Choose one that fits the fabrics you've chosen. And if you have very distinctive lights and darks, there's really some cool layouts you can use. So for now, you're going to have to wait until I get my blog post created after I sew these together so you can see the actual finished quilt of what I decided on because I'm just not right, sure right now what and how I want to lay them out. Either way, I love, love, love my colors. I think they're going to be beautiful. I just don't know how I'm going to put them all together. So take care. Leave a comment if you have any questions at all about what I've gone on over. Give me a like, give me a share. I would really appreciate it. Take care and thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video today. You can follow me by doing one, subscribing to this YouTube channel, hitting the bell icon on the subscribe button so you're notified every time I drop a new video. But you can also find me over on Facebook, Wendy J. Haney. So facebook.com slash Wendy J. Haney. Also, I have a Facebook group for people that love needlework, books, wine, all sorts of things also. The name of the group is called Life Fulfilled Quilting Needlework Wine. Basically, you can't miss it. It's facebook.com slash group slash life fulfilled. You'll be able to find it. You can also find me over on my website, wendyjhaney.com. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here and I appreciate all your comments and feedback that you're providing me. Take care.